Hello children, we are going to study kingdom classification today. Now there are millions of different types of organisms starting from single cell microorganisms like bacteria to large sized plants like mango, banyan, people and huge sized animals like elephants, whales, etc. So these living beings, they show in finite diversity. Now for studying the diversity in living organisms, they are grouped according to the increasing similarity from less complex to more and more complex types. So, the process of grouping similar things on the basis of similarities and differences is called classification. In broad sense, it not only involves the grouping of animals into categories, it also includes their identification and naming. Now, what are the advantages of classification? Classification makes the study of living organisms simpler and easier. It helps in easy identification of living organisms. Affinities or relationships between different organisms can easily be known. It also helps in tracing the possible origin of organisms. Now the early system of classification. Around 2000 years ago, the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle was the first person to classify organisms. Now classifying organisms, that is grouping the organisms, naming the organisms and finding the relationship between different organisms together comes under the branch of biology known as taxonomy. So we can say that taxonomy is the branch of biology that names and groups organisms according to the, their characteristics and evolutionary history. Now the early system of classification which was done by Aristotle, there the organisms were grouped into land dwellers, water dwellers and air dwellers. Plants were placed into three categories based on the differences in their stem. But as new organisms were discovered, gradually his system became inadequate. The categories were not specific enough. Common names did not describe a species accurately. Names were long and hard to remember. Then came the modern system of classification, the hierarchy seven levels of organization. Now this hierarchy means it is a ranking system of different levels of organization. Carolus Linnaeus, who was a Swedish biologist around the mid 1700 established a simple system of classifying and naming organisms. He developed a hierarchy for classifying organisms which is the basis of modern taxonomy. And because his way of classification, his system of classification is the basis of modern taxonomy, he is considered 
as the father of modern taxonomy. Now, Linnaeus used an organism's morphology to categorize it. His system allowed the organisms to be grouped with similar organisms. He first divided all organisms into two kingdoms, Plantae and animal Animalia, which was like the Aristotle's main categories. Now the modern system, the hierarchy levels of the modern organized uh, classification are the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Now Linnaeus's classification did not have phylum and family in it. The phylum and the family were added into the modern system of classification by the modern scientists. So we can see the modern system has each kingdom, maybe a plant or an, or an animal, divided into phylum and each phylum divided into smaller groups called class each class divided into an order, each order divided into a family, each family divided into a genus, and each genus divided into a species which gives the scientific name of the organism. So the levels are arranged like this, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Here is a small tip for you people to remember the levels in proper order. Now the classification hierarchy of organisms which we discussed just now, here we will see some examples. Let us consider lion. So lion comes under the kingdom Animalia which is again divided into Chordata, then class Mammalia, order Carnivora, family Felidae, genus Panthera, and species is Panthera Leo. So the scientific name of lion is Panthera Leo. Now, next we come to five kingdom classification. After two kingdom classification came three kingdom classification, four kingdom classification. But these classifications had certain things, certain points to be reconsidered. As uh, different organisms, newer organisms were discovered gradually. So the two kingdom classification and the related other classification had to be reconsidered. So after careful consideration of these problems, R. H. Whitaker Robert H. Whitaker in 1969 proposed a five kingdom classification which was based on the cell structure that is whether an organism is prokaryotic or eukaryotic, the mode of nutrition whether the organism is autotrophic or heterotrophic and the body organization, whether it is unicellular or multicellular. So here you can see the five kingdom classification. The five kingdoms of this classification are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. 
as we have discussed just now it was done on the basis of cell type number of cells and the mode of nutrition you can see the monera consists of organisms which are only prokaryotic unicellular and generally autotrophic may be heterotrophic also protista the kingdom protista has all organisms which are eukaryotic may be unicellular or multicellular and mode of nutrition may be autotrophic or heterotrophic next coming to the category fungi the kingdom fungi here all organisms are eukaryotic may be unicellular or multicellular but their mode of nutrition is completely heterotrophic then the fourth kingdom that is plantae all organisms here are eukaryotic they are multicellular and they are or almost autotrophic really very rarely heterotrophic also the last kingdom that is animalia here the cell type all organisms are eukaryotic of course they are multicellular and their mode of nutrition they are heterotrophic now coming to each kingdom one by one first kingdom that is monera here we have all organisms as we discussed just now they are unicellular and prokaryotes that is single celled organisms which neither have a distinct nucleus with a membrane nor specialized organelles so all organisms here are unicellular prokaryotes most of the bacteria which affect our life come under this kingdom monera they can be autotrophic also they can be heterotrophic also now this kingdom monera it includes the, includes the greatest number of living beings on the earth next we come to the second kingdom uh, before going to the second kingdom uh, let us discuss about two examples over here here we can see escherichia coli or e coli and staphylococcus two bacteria names of two bacteria are given over here which comes under the kingdom monera next we come to the kingdom protista kingdom protista contains all eukaryotes that means here they have a well defined nucleus that is surrounded by membrane and also the cell organelles present within the cell now kingdom protista contains all eukaryotes that are not plants animal or fungi more than 50000 species are there under this kingdom kingdom protista includes unicellular and exceptionally there are few multicellular eukaryotes also now the cells of the multicellular protists are not specialized to perform the spe uh, specific functions in organisms examples include the euglena and amoeba next coming to the third category that is kingdom fungi fungi are eukaryotes and are mostly multicellular the cells of fungi contain a special material called chitin these organisms are heterotrophic and they obtain their nutrition 
by releasing digestive enzymes into the food source. They absorb their food after it has been digested by the enzymes. The fungi act either as decomposers or as parasites in nature. Now the examples which come under the kingdom fungi includes molds, mildews, mushrooms, yeast, etc. Coming to the next kingdom that is plantae. All plants come under this kingdom. They are eukaryotic, they are multicellular and they carry out photosynthesis. So they are all autotrophs. The cells of plants have cell walls that contain cellulose. Plant cells are specialized for different functions such as photosynthesis, the transport of materials and support. Kingdom plantae includes mosses, ferns, cone-bearing plants which are also known as gymnosperm and flowering plants which are known as angiosperms. Next coming to Kingdom Animalia. All animals come under this category. They are multicellular, eukaryotic and heterotrophic. Animal cells like plant cells have cell walls but animal cells they have no cell walls. Most members of animal kingdom can move from one place to the other. Some are permanently attached to surfaces like sponges and barnacles. Fish, bird, reptiles, amphibians and mammals including humans, they all belong to the kingdom Animalia. Now examples coming under this kingdom include sponges, jellyfish, wart, worms, sea stars, insects, etc. Now the groups which come under the kingdom Animalia are Porifera, rather I can say the phylum which come under the kingdom Animalia are Porifera, Celenterata which is also known as Nedaria, Platyhelminthus, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata and Chordata. We are going to discuss each phylum of this kingdom one by one. Coming to the first phylum Porifera, let us see here as the name suggests Porifera, you can understand porous animals with pores all over their body and they are mostly found in sea water. Some of them, they are also found in fresh water. They do not move from place to place. They are attached to the bottom of the sea or pond. Examples of this category are Porifera. Next coming to the second kingdom phyla that is Cylenterata, also known as Nidaria. They have hollow sac like structure in the body, bag shaped body, hollow sac like animals with bag shaped body and only one opening called the mouth and the mouth is surrounded by a number of finger-like structures 
all tentacles. Examples coming under this category are hydra, sea anemone, etc. Next we come to the third phylum that is platyhelminthes. Now most of the organisms which come under this phylum are parasitic. They may be either living inside the body of the organism or living outside the body of the organism. Their body is thin, flattened, leaf-like or ribbon-like. Mainly their body is unsegmented in nature but exceptions are always there. So tapeworm which also comes under this category platyhelminthes has a segmented body. So examples of platyhelminthes are liver fluke, tapeworm etc. Coming to the next phylum that is nematoda. Either parasites or free living organisms. Now how do they look like? Their body is narrow and cylindrical in nature and they have unsegmented body also. For example, the roundworm and the ascaris. The next phylum we see Annelida. The organisms coming under this phylum have a soft and segmented body. Their locomotion is carried out through external appendages in the form of city or parapodia. Their respiration is either through general body surface or through the gills. For example, we have the earthworm and the leech coming under the phylum Annelida. Next, we have the phylum Arthropoda. The organisms coming under this category have jointed legs. Body is segmented into three categories. The head, the thorax and the abdomen. They have a tough outer covering which is the exoskeleton. They also have compound eyes with many lenses present instead of just one. So they have a mosaic vision. The animals coming under this category are butterfly, crab, etc. Next coming to phylum mollusca. The animals coming under this category have a soft and unsegmented body. They carry out their locomotion with the help of muscular foot. Their body is enclosed in a hard shell which forms the exoskeleton and that hard shell is made up of calcium carbonate. Examples of this category are muscle, snail, etc. Next coming to the phylum Echinodermata. The animals coming under this category have rough body and also spiny one. Now the body may be star shaped or ball like. They are mainly marine animals. They have no head or tail, no left and right side. They have almost symmetrical structures. For example, starfish, 
brittle star, sea urchin, etc. Next coming to phylum Chordata. Now we will discuss some classes of phylum Chordata. The classes of phylum Chordata are the Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Avis and Mammalia. First we come to the spices. The animals coming under this class of phylum Chordata, the Pisces, they live in water. They are mainly cold blooded. They have streamlined body which helps them in swimming. And for breathing purpose, they have special organs called gills and their body generally covered by scales. <coughs> for example, shark, lamprey, etc. Coming to the next class of phylum Chordata is amphibia. The animals of amphibia can live in water and also live on land. They are also cold-blooded animals. These animals, they lay their eggs in water and they breathe through their lungs and also through their skin. For example, toad and frog. When these animals, when they are in water, they breathe through their skin and when they are in on land, they generally breathe through their lungs. Next coming to the third class of phylum Chordata, that is reptiles. Mostly found on land, cold-blooded animals, their body covered with scales and they breathe through lungs. For example, tortoise, crocodile, etc. Coming to the next class of phylum Chordata, that is Avis. Here the body are generally covered with feathers. The animals coming under this category have body covered with feathers, warm blooded animals. Till now we were seeing Pisces, Amphibia and Reptilia have cold blooded animals. Now we see Avis, warm blooded animals. Most of the species here are aerial in nature. The wings are present in the body. They have streamed line body which help them in flying and the bones are hollow and help them to keep their body light. For example, pigeon and ostrich. Next we come to the next class that is mammals. Here we see the body is covered with hair, warm blooded animals. They give birth to young ones. They have mammary glands present, nourish their young ones with their own milk, breathe through lungs. Now examples of this cat class phylum are kangaroo, monkey and human. So all these are the classes of phylum Chordata. Now this was what was supposed to be taught about the five kingdom of classification for your class. As you go to higher class you will be studying about this in details. So that's all for today children. Thank you.